In its wake, Hurricane Katrina left 80% of New Orleans underwater, destroying or severely damaging 110 of the city's 126 public school buildings. I was devastated uh, going to visit schools that were either totally underwater or partially underwater, buildings with no roofs. Uh, buildings that uh, were just totally decimated. This was something that looked like uh, the aftermath of a world war. And uh, it was unlike anything I had ever seen. And to make matters worse, FEMA's Stafford Act wasn't equipped to handle such a disaster. The way the law was written, you were penalized 25% if you tried to build something better. That was the law. The law made no sense to me. What we wanted to build for the future. I said, why in the heck would you all spend one penny building the school system we had for the last hundred years when we need to think about what kind of school system we need for the next hundred years? And so we worked on new legislation. Which amended the Stafford Act and allowed for faster reconstruction of public facilities damaged by disaster. Immediately, Senator Landrieu began working on getting federal funding to rebuild the schools. In 2007, Paul Pastrick was tapped to oversee the Louisiana Department of Education. His goals were to get students in classrooms quickly and set in motion the largest school rebuilding program in the nation. Before Katrina, for years and years, you know, the schools were in such disrepair. You have to have an environment where kids can see their own greatness. You couldn't see that before Katrina. You really couldn't. And we didn't have the resources to do anything about that. Katrina comes along. Now we had this incredible opportunity that Senator Landrieu had led the effort in creating. We felt like it was really important to build a process so that the decision around which schools would be repaired, what would the extent of the repairs be, uh, would be one that would be done in a thoughtful way. I think we had several hundred community meetings all over the city. Pastor asked Bill Roussel to help facilitate those discussions and serve as a community outreach liaison, a person people trusted who could bring people together. One of the things he wanted to do was to start building immediately so people in this community could see something coming up out of the ground. We came up with the idea of going to each city council district uh, representative and have them to form a committee of their constituents and decide what school in their district needed to be rebuilt. And that's how the Quick Start started. And the Quick Start program ensured five new or renovated schools in two years. The first to open was Langston Hughes Elementary in August 2009, followed by L.B. Landry and Lake Area High Schools, Andrew Wilson, and Fannie C. Williams Elementary Schools. There's some footage of the kids coming into the school for the first time. And there's a little girl who just looks around in amazement. And I think that really captures what people really felt uh, seeing the school built. Uh, the community, I think, was uh, reassured that we could rebuild, that New Orleans could come back. Because if you remember, there were people that wanted to write us off the map. But not rebuilding schools, the lifeblood of our city wasn't an option. And in 2008, the school facilities master plan was finally adopted by the Orleans Parish School Board and the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. Getting to this point required a lot of diplomacy. The schools are fabrics of the community, and because they are a fabric, people tend to uh, hold dear to them and figure out 
you know, okay, what about my school? A lot of debate and concern about what schools were going to look like, how are they going to build, how are they going to be uh, service, who's actually going to teach there. So we had a meeting of the minds, listened to the individuals from the various communities, and the, uh, the master plan tried to address the needs of each community by having architectural designs based upon what the needs of that particular community was. The ambitious school construction proposal, led by RSD and OPSB, established educational and green building standards and put forth a $1.8 billion plan. Ultimately, the goal was to ensure all students attended a school in a new, renovated, or refurbished building. With the plan in hand and help from Senator Landrieu, OPSB and RSD were able to fight for a settlement from FEMA to fund the school facilities master plan. And so the $1.8 billion was negotiated, but give it to us in one lump sum so we can plan correctly and think about how we want to do this. And so it was really up to the school board and to the civic leadership of the community, how to rebuild, what to renovate, when to renovate. Two years later, with school construction underway, there was a lot of contention about whether African-American contractors were being included in the school rebuilding program. RSD Superintendent Patrick Dobart heard the community's concerns and took the lead in establishing the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, or DBE, program in New Orleans. Patrick's father was at times a self-employed electrician. When he got work, the family had plenty to eat. And the fact that my father knew someone who ended up getting a sub job on that to help better their families' lives in their situations. It became almost like who you knew and, and it was very fortunate. And so for me at that moment, I decided that I was going to do everything in my power to not make that happenstance. The actual state law for Louisiana was silent on the matter. It didn't say if you could do DBEs, it didn't say you couldn't do it. And so we tried it, we were successful. So young boys like me, um, whose families worked on this project, was able to have um, plenty of food and happy times because of that. And so for me, it was very personal to get this done. With community involvement, a solid rebuilding plan, and funding in place, a school building boom flourished between 2014 and 2020. Brand new, modern high schools popped up around the city, like 35 College Prep, George Washington Carver, and New Orleans Science and Math. RSD's Lona Hankins oversaw the construction program in partnership with OPSB. As the heartbeat of the project, she was determined to ensure facilities were respectful of the students who would use them. I hope they feel loved um, when they walk into the building, that they, they know that people did this for them. Um, as one young lady said, they did this for us, right? I hope they feel that. I hope that you know, the educators feel like we cared about them and the, their working conditions. 15 years of love and care later, 32 new schools have been built, 17 renovated, 31 refurbished, and nine preserved to the tune of more than $2 billion, made possible by stacking the FEMA lump sum with tax credits and grant funding. In all, 79 school facilities have come to life thanks to the passion of OPSB and RSD leaders, Senator Landrieu, FEMA, and the community and their invaluable feedback, all sharing one dream to rebuild New Orleans public schools better than they were before. So it's great that our scholars have these amazing learning environments that are top notch as it relates to being innovative and gives them the opportunity to ensure that they have the facilities necessary to help prepare them for those high wage, high skilled jobs of the future. And I just want to commend our operations team and the many supporters that we've had over the years to get to this point. It is so super exciting and it's truly a celebration. The culmination is we have have a better place today than where we were in 2005. That's the bottom line. They're literally, I think they're the finest school buildings of any city in the, in, in the country. I, I mean, I, I don't know that for a fact, but I would guess that that is true because they're the newest. They were built uh, with wonderful designs and I think good construction and smart ways. The people of New Orleans, can look back on and say, you know, we did something extraordinary. And the real beneficiaries are the children. It makes me real emotional because I'm proud of the legacy that we've left for these children. 
These children deserve, so many generations of New Orleans children deserve to have the absolute best. And we did it on time, on budget, without corruption. We did it, we did what we said we were going to do. And whether I was here for this brief period of time in the beginning or others who came after, everybody did their job and here we are. Now we're complete. Now it's a success and now we have these beautiful schools for kids. And 20 years ago, not a hint of what they have today. Something to be proud of, really. <laughs>